Yeah, not much has been going on since the fair, so I don't have a I don't have another street porch shenanigans video for you right now, but got a couple of interesting stories to share with you that's happened since then. So a couple of weeks ago, as I'm checking my mailbox, I find a binder and some loose papers scattered around my mailbox. And I <clears throat> I've been down and I check to see what's what this stuff is, and it turns out that it's a car salesman, a car salesman trainee's folder and paperwork. And I'm like, why the hell is this in my yard? So I take it inside. I gather all the papers up and I take them inside. And I see the person's name on some of the paperwork that it belongs to. So uh, the first thing that pops into my head is, you know, go on Facebook and try to contact this person. But then I said, no, let me check with Nextdoor. And for those of you who don't know what Nextdoor is, Nextdoor is like a little app that's it's similar to Facebook, but it's like more like a neighborhood Facebook. You can keep in touch with your neighbors on this app about, you know, neighborhood safety, uh, neighborhood watches, neighborhood events, whatever. Because I live in Greenwood. I don't even live in Shreveport. I live in Greenwood. So I. I get on the Greenwood forum and I type in this person's name. And I said, hey, I found this guy's stuff who works at Holmes Honda on, in my yard. Why would it be in my yard? So about an hour later, this guy uh, comments under my post and says, yeah, hey, yeah, I know this guy. I know this guy and I know his father, too. Um, his truck got broken into just recently. Th that's his stuff. And I'm like, wow, like. So somebody who broke into this man's truck just drove by my house and just chucked it out the window after he discovered that it's nothing important, but nothing that he would want, at least. <clears throat> and, yeah, so I found I found criminal evidence outside my house and near my mailbox a few weeks ago. So, yeah, it's, it's getting bad out here, guys. Uh, please lock your doors at night. Lock your car doors at night. Take all your valuables out because these these crooks, they are on a mission this year. Now, let's get to the title of this video. This place, DAVTAC, it's a gun store in Bossier City. Now, I just recently got into guns. I've been watching a lot of gun videos on YouTube. And so I decided to start a new hobby. I just want to get into guns now. So I bought my first handgun, a Glock 19 Gen 5, back in the summer. Um... I bought that on BudsGunShop.com, and I had it transferred to Patrick's Gun Shop in North Shreveport. And my first gun buying experience, it went great. The guy at Patrick's Gun Shop, he was really cool. Really cool dude. He, we even uh, talked politics and talked a little shit about Joe Biden. And then he inspected my Glock to make sure it functioned properly before I walked up out of there with it. My first experience with DAVTAC, not so great. So earlier this week, I go on DAVTAC's site to check out their inventory, and I come across this Colt AR-15. I've always wanted an AR-15, and I see that the gun is, not only do they have it in their warehouse, but they also had it in their store in stock already. So I decided to go with that one because I did my research on ARs, and Colt, they're one of the, I think they are the first makers of the AR. Just about every other gun manufacturer makes the AR now, but I like Colt because it has a longer military history and, you know, I wanted to go with the best. So Saturday, the day after Black Friday, I decided to go out there and pick up my gun. And y'all know, for those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you know, I take my GoPro almost everywhere I go. And I had my GoPro on under my jacket. My jacket was unzipped at the time. Before I walk inside, I decided not to turn my GoPro on because I didn't, this was my first time going to DAVTAC and I didn't know how the employees would react to seeing that GoPro recording. So I decided to just, I, I kept my GoPro on and I just kept it concealed under my jacket. I zipped up my jacket before I walked in. Okay, so I walk in and I'm confronted it wasn't a greeting. It was rather like a confrontation by this guy by the name of Joey. And he's like, what are you doing here? And I tell him, I said, my name is Gibson and I'm here to pick up an order, an online order that I made on your you guys' site. 
and he's he goes, well, I, I, I'm confused. Um, well, what what is that you that you need? And I'm sitting here looking at him like, didn't you hear me the first time? My name is Gibson, and I'm here to pick up an order that I made online. I know it's here because it's it said that the store the gun was in stock. And then he says, okay, well, did you call or did we call you? I said, no, I didn't have to call because I knew that my gun was already here in the store, ready to, ready for pickup. And, you know, at this point, I'm getting agitated. He's agitated. Uh, a younger employee that's standing behind him, he sees that the situation is about to get heated. So he decides to step in and says, okay, man, what did you order? I said, I, I ordered a Colt AR-15. I'm here to pick it up. He said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know who you are. Yeah, I got your stuff right here, man. Just hold on for a minute. I said, thanks. So this guy, Joey, then turns around. Well, I, I give him my driver's license. He takes my driver's license and he, uh, he runs a copy of it, does a little quick background check. And then he turns back around with the paperwork, you know, the paperwork that you got to fill out whenever you buy a gun. He, he, he slaps the paperwork on the table and says, OK, start right here, sign here and stop right there. I'm like, OK, damn, dude. So Joey walks away. He leaves the counter and I'm filling out my paperwork. And about halfway through through the paperwork, I kind of noticed somebody. I, I got the feeling that somebody was staring at me. So I kind of turned. I slightly turned to my right. To see what's in my peripheral. And I noticed that Joey is now standing behind me, not directly behind me, but about six feet behind me. And I couldn't really make out what he was doing. I, it looked like he was either scrolling through his phone or he was whispering to a customer because there was a customer standing like right by him. I couldn't really make out what he was doing because I didn't turn directly around. So now I'm distracted. I'm I'm thinking I'm, I can't even finish my paperwork. I'm wondering what's going through this guy's head. Like, what did he think that I was there to do? Did he think I was there to rob the place or something? Like, who who comes to a gun store to rob the place? Who does that? Somebody with a death wish? Now, I do know a few weeks before uh, another gun shop on Benton Road, Guns and Ammo, they were burglarized. But burglary and robbery are two different things. Nobody goes into a gun store during store hours to rob the place. You, you're just asking to get a bunch of bullet holes in you. I finished the paperwork and Joey, he's left the room by then. So I leaned over to the younger guy. I never got his, the younger guy's name because I was too pissed off with Joey. But I asked him, I said, uh, so what's up with this Joey dude? What's wrong with him? He's giving me the third degree. He's very aggressive. What's his problem? And then he goes, oh, I don't know, man. You know, he's a, a older white guy and he's a former cop. And that's when I go, oh, OK, so that's what it is. You see a young black guy walk into a gun store and you think I'm up to no good. So I got my gun and the serial number that was originally assigned to my receipt, that was actually their display gun. So this guy made sure that I got a brand new gun and not the display gun that was which was used. So he made sure I got a brand new gun and the Winchester ammo that I also ordered, they were out of stock. So he replaced that with eight 20 packs of PMC green tip 556 ammo. So I actually got a, a, a free 10 rounds of PMC ammo because the Winchester came in 150. So, yeah, that's how my first trip to DavTech went. <laughs> uh, will I be back? Oh, yeah, I'll definitely be back. I don't scare easily. You know, he tried to be as intimidating as possible, but he didn't scare me at all. So I'll, I'll be back probably no time soon because right now I'm satisfied. I got a handgun and a rifle and that's really all I need for right now. But uh, some of you who are watching, you probably know Joey and the younger guy that I'm referring to. Uh, tell Joey to watch this video next time you see him. When you go when you go back to Dav Tech, tell him I made a video about him and hopefully he'll watch it. So he'll know how big of an asshole he was because he didn't do his job, plain and simple. Didn't do his job. Didn't do what he was supposed to be doing. When I walked in with my license in hand, all he had to do was do his job. Take my license, make a copy, give me my paperwork, save all the smart talk. But he didn't do that. He, he was an asshole, like I said. But the younger guy, thank you. Who uh, I didn't get your name, but thanks. And yeah, 
that's I just I, I just decided to share that story with y'all. So yeah, peace. Until next time.